The following is a special presentation on CW7 Arizona. Welcome to Before You Vote. I'm Mike Broomhead. The CW7 special program is here to help you, the voter, understand the 2024 primary election. We'll be talking with candidates and data analysts to give you insight into who and what is on the ballot. Today on the show, Chris Steyerwalt from CW7's newest political show, The Hill, joins us. We'll be getting his take on how the Arizona election looks from a national perspective. Then we're giving you a news recap for the week. Learn all about these stories happening in Arizona from the election filing deadline to the newest bills passed by Governor Katie Hobbs. It's a show you don't want to miss. We'll be back in exactly 60 seconds before you vote. CW7 Arizona about a brand new show that we're going to be carrying, and it is The Hill Sunday with Chris Steyer. Well, Chris joins us now. It's great to meet you, Chris. Oh, heck yeah. Uh, let's talk about your show. Uh, what can viewers expect from this show? You've been around this business for quite a while. What can they expect from your show? Unremitting, unremitting raw excellence. Uh, no, what I what I think they can count on, what I hope they can count on, is that we'll treat them like grown-ups, uh, and that we won't we won't herd them into partisan herds and say these are the good people and those are the bad people. We're not going to say that these are that that you're right and they're wrong. What we're going to say is this is how you could maybe be a better citizen this week. You could be a better American this week, maybe if we learned about what was going on. And we talked about things in a grown-up way, which is hard to do uh, in TV, right? Uh, because the soundbite uh, reigns supreme, and the the quickest way to get there uh, is to sort things into red and blue and partisan in that way. But I I, I hope people can count on that we will uh, treat them like grown-ups and and have a and have a more difficult, if uh, more uh, rewarding, conversation. What are you most excited about? I know it's an election year, but what are you most excited about talking to the audience and bringing to the audience? I love the fact that we have an all-journalist panel. I hate spin. I hate, hate, hate spin. I hate partisanship uh, dressed up as analysis, where people come on and say, this is what you're supposed to think if you're a Republican, or this is what you're supposed to think if you're a Democrat. One way that we have to get around that is, we have a panel of journalists. You know, I've been in the business for quite a while. I've been in Washington for quite a while. And uh, I know a lot of cool people who work in the news business and who are journalists who have covered things at very high levels, analysts. Uh, and look, there's opinions there, but it's not about partisanship. It's not about persuading people to vote one way or the other. It's a conversation among grownups about what's really going on and what they really think. And those honest opinions uh, are a thing of real value for people who are trying to figure out uh, what does it mean, where do they fit into it, and, and beyond just the spin. So when it comes to the election cycle, there is all the talk about the biggest issues for voters. What are the big issues that you think you'll be taking into the election year? What are the things you think you need to bring to the voters so they're a more educated voter when they go to the polls? I, uh, for me, I think when you get right down to it, uh, this is an election where obviously the economy is the big, is the big driver. Uh, but then with it, you have immigration. And you have, which Arizona certainly knows all about, and then you have uh, reproductive rights, access to abortion. So this is an election where persuadable voters are going to tend to be caught between those two issues, where Joe Biden is struggling on the question of uh, immigration, but he is succeeding uh, or Democrats are succeeding on the question as it relates to abortion and uh, the Dobbs decision and the aftermath thereof. So I think that's a good way to think about it. 
Independent voters, or in, in Arizona, we call them party non-declared. How big of a role would they pay? Do you think they'll play a bigger role now than ever before in deciding, especially the presidential election? has got it all the way down, right? You have a presidential election that people aren't really that excited about. Uh, and then you have a Senate race that is a, a, a another version of that, right? You ha it, it tracks very much where you have a lot of uh, a lot of people who are tuned out, fed up uh, with the two parties and what the two parties are able to offer them. And Arizona has this great heritage, right, of mavericky independence. And we can trace all the way back to statehood in Arizona, this great story about Arizonans who, yeah, they've Arizona's tended to be more Republican than Democrat, but overall what Arizona has tended to be is kind of a sidewinder, right? It does its own thing. And that's cool. Uh, and the independent streak in the Arizona electorate uh, really caught Republicans by surprise, I think, in uh, 2020. They were not expecting that Arizona would assert itself in that way. This time, Democrats are, are worried that the, that the sidewinder uh, goes off in the, in the other direction, right? And polls right now would indicate that that's what will happen, that Arizona falls back into the red category. But you know what? I, I call Arizona a pure, pure toss up. It's really hard to it's really hard to predict at this point. Uh, and we'll wait to see whether Joe Biden can basically put his coalition back together. Uh, and that's by bringing back some of the progressive left who is really angry at him about Israel and some other things, but then also holding on to and shoring up with the persuadable voters in places like Maricopa County, where uh, those suburbanites defected from the Republicans four years ago. So Arizona is where it's at, man. So let's talk about your show specifically. Who do you have coming on the show next week? So uh, next time we're going to, this this coming show, yes. we're going to talk uh, to Michael Watley. He's the uh, chairman of the Republican National Committee, uh, new, uh, and we're going to talk to him about what's up uh, with the RNC and about their swing state plans and fundraising troubles and advantages and all of that stuff. Uh, we've got some Democratic lawmakers. We're going to join us uh, to talk about the same issues, but also to talk about the, the pinch point on Israel uh, and Hamas that the Biden administration finds itself in. So we're going to talk about that. We've got our magnificent panel of journalists. And we have, you know, a couple of little extras in the show that I think give it some sweetness and light uh, that that sort of, uh, I guess the way I would say it is, a fellow told me once a long time ago, you can take your job seriously without taking yourself seriously. So hopefully we can do that too. Sounds like a great combination. His name is Chris Steyerwald. It's the, it's the Hill Sunday with Chris Steyerwald. A few more minutes with Chris. We're going to talk specifically about Arizona issues and how they play uh, nationally. We'll do that here in just a moment. Stick around. Coming up next, it's a recap of the biggest stories affecting Arizona voters. Plus, later in the show, Chris Steyerwalt from The Hill joins us with his take on the Arizona election. So stick around right here for more Before You Vote. Welcome back to Before You Vote. Let's take a look at a couple of the stories I've been watching that have been developing. CD1, represented by David Schweikert. Now, Congressman Schweikert won that seat again, only about 3,000 votes in the victory. But he is being challenged by a lot of people on the Democratic side, and people are saying this race could be even closer the next time around. We're going to be updating you on that race as the weeks go on. Now, let's talk about CD4, and that, of course, is Greg Stanton's seat. There are a lot of Republican challengers, some names you'll recognize and some that you won't. First of all, you've got Giles, who is in there. He has been there before, and so he's a known name in that district. We also have in there Jerron Davis, a fair, fairly new guy in this race, but as someone that's going to make a lot of noise. You have got Kelly Cooper, who has run for a congressional seat before, so he's no stranger to elections. And finally, you have Dr. Zudi Jasser, who is a well-known name and an activist in Republican politics. So with those four running, are we going to see someone really seriously challenge Greg Stanton, or are they going to spend their time and money in this primary race? Finally, let's talk about a couple of things that happened in the legislature. First of all, we now officially have a state planet. And I know what you're thinking, with all the things going on, why do we need a state planet? 
Well, Arizona officially named Pluto its state planet. And the reason why? It was discovered right here from a telescope in the state of Arizona. And something I've been talking about for a very long time, and that is the tamale bill. I want to spend a couple of minutes on this. In the last legislative session, the tamale bill came up with huge support from both sides of the aisle. What this would do is allow people that cooked home meals to sell them on the streets. We've all seen the carts or the cars on the side of the road with signs saying fresh tamales for sale. Well, that is against the law. So there was going, a, a law was going to be passed, and it was passed through the legislature that said that you could do this. The governor vetoed it, citing food issues and concerned about illness. So now it came back. Over the weekend, the governor signed the bill. Why? I think because of the outcry from both sides. There were some changes. You're going to have to have a food handler's card. You're going to have to have labels made with your food handler card number on it. So there are going to be some restrictions, but they're going to start allowing people that are trying to supplement their incomes to do so by selling food from home kitchens. Not going to be a big deal, never was a big deal in my opinion, but a lot of people really were behind this on both sides of the aisle because it's a lot of working class people trying to supplement their incomes. So I always thought this was a big issue because we love people being industrious, but now we're seeing the governor has finally signed on to it. It looks as if in Arizona this is a done deal. So those are the catch up for this week of what we've done. And we're going to talk more, of course, as the days go on here on Before You Vote on what will be happening with these legislative races and pieces of legislation that are passing, hopefully a budget soon from inside the, uh, the state legislature. We'll be back in a moment on Before You Vote. Coming up, how is the Arizona election viewed from a national perspective? Chris Steyer Walt from The Hill joins us next. This is Before You Vote. Before you vote, we're talking with Chris Steyerwalt from the Hill Sunday with Chris Steyerwalt. I want to ask you specifically about Arizona. How do you think Arizona, how important is Arizona in the national scale with the presidential race and our Senate race? You can't, I mean, the election very, very well may come down to Arizona. Uh, it is the, the beachhead for Democrats in the southern tier of states. All of the hopes that Democrats have about Texas one day, uh, about uh, the Georgia and other southern states, Arizona is a great access point for that for Democrats. 2020. Uh, but at the same time, uh, partisan tendencies uh, run hard. And that Senate race is going to be, um, you know, my, my condolences to everybody whose uh, mailbox and phone lines are going to be jammed uh, because there's going to be so many tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars are going to get poured into Arizona because that Senate seat uh, could very well make the difference in control. And both parties are wrestling with candidates who are going to struggle to persuade in the middle. Uh, and it's going to be a wild ride. So specifically on the presidential race, but my theory has been this, the first candidate or first political party, both Republican and Democrat, that learn how to speak to the party non-declared voters are going to be the party or is going to be the party or candidate that wins. And uh, do you agree with that theory? And if so, why? a lasting, durable majority available to either one of these parties nationally uh, that can just be normal. You can just be normal. Yeah. <laughs> the, the great underserved part of the American electorate are normal people. Uh, and we have two parties that tend to cater to the extremes because of how our uh, crazy primary election system works. It's the just it's been a 50 year experiment that's been a total disaster um, because what we've done is empowered basically 7 percent of the electorate uh, to choose the candidates for office. And then when 100 percent of the electorate or half of the electorate shows up to vote, they say, is this all there is? This all there is? is this really the best that we can do? And the party that can figure out how to talk 
to normal people and act normal and care about normal things, uh, that will be the party that could develop a permanent, if not not a permanent majority, but a durable majority uh, in this country. And there's tons of voters like that in Arizona. When you look at the turnout in 2020, it was massive. Do you think that there are going to be a number of voters because it's a rematch between Joe Biden and Donald Trump that will stay home? Or do you think we're going to see another massive turnout? to think it would be lower. Now, we we watched in the primaries, and the primaries aren't great indicators necessarily for how general election t turnout will be. Um, we did see pretty substantial uh, turnout in the early primaries. But I would say this, the 2022 midterm saw a, uh, a reversal of the trend towards higher and higher turnout that we saw in 2018 and 2020. I expect that the trend will continue and we'll go back to something more normal uh, for 2024. But I don't know. Tensions are hot. People are still mad. And there's a lot of anxiety. I guess I would say high turnout is a bad sign in, in this way, which is you get high turnout elections when people are anxious. Uh, you get low turnout elections when people feel chill uh, about how things are in the country. So that's one way to think about it is as a barometer for voter anxiety. It's interesting. Arizona is kind of a dichotomy. You mentioned the two big issues, the economy on one side and the border. We're a border state. The border is a huge issue here, and I know it is nationally. But here in Arizona, economy is really good, border not so good. Which one has the upper hand when it comes to the election for these two candidates? Either or, I think it's both and, right? Um, so you, when we when we think about how Biden can mobilize and motivate. Uh, working class voters, particularly uh, in uh, Metro uh, Phoenix, but uh, all over the state, who gets hit hardest by inflation, right? It's working class people. They're the ones who feel the pain first, and they're the ones who feel the recovery last. And that's a serious, serious issue. Um, the other side of the question about immigration and the border, so you have a lot of people who would be inclined to want to vote for Joe Biden. Uh, or at least vote against Donald Trump. But when they look at the chaos at the border and they see the images and they also, people look in their communities, and this isn't just true in Arizona, it's true all over the country. When they look in their communities, what do they see? They see uh, sort of transient migrant populations. They see local resources stressed uh, and it turns them against Biden. So I think those, I, I think those are two very important pinch points. Chris, I appreciate the insight. It's great to meet you, and I look forward to talking to you again. We'll be back here in just a few moments on Before You Vote. Welcome back to Before You Vote. A big thank you to The Hill's Chris Steyerwalt for being on the show today. Now remember, you can tune into The Hill Sundays at 4.30 right here on CW7 Arizona. It airs right before Before You Vote. If you miss an interview or you want to rewatch any of them, head over to aztv.com slash vote. Now there, you're also going to find resources such as checking your voter status and the upcoming important dates in the 2024 election. It's never too soon to start preparing for the election year ahead. Speaking of the election year ahead, here on the show, as things become more focused, we're going to start having candidates on the statewide races. We'll have candidates from both parties and all of them so you get a better idea of where they stand on the issues. We're going to bring in the important races in Maricopa County and other parts of the state and what's going to form either the state legislature or the county as a whole. We want to do this so that you have information and you hear from the candidates themselves and what the important races are in the state. Also, the big issues and the ballot initiatives that you as a voter are going to have a say in. These will form and change our Constitution and the direction of the state outside of legislative control. All of this makes up the 2024 election. And again, we just want the most informed voter bloc that we can possibly have, whether you're Republican, Democrat, or a party non-declared voter. As you heard Chris say and others, Arizona is going to be ground zero. It may decide control of the Senate for the Republicans or the Democrats, and it could be a key to the presidential race of whether it's four more years of President Biden or four more years of Donald Donald Trump. That's how important Arizona is going to be, and we want to help you be informed. Have a great Sunday. Join us next week right here on Before You Vote.
To help you this election season, head over to CW7Arizona.com, check out your voter status, register to vote, as well as all other voter resources.